During an Instagram live stream, Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez powerfully tore into the Republican lawmakers who have basically enabled this president, who are abdicating their responsibility to invoke the 25th Amendment and remove him. And everything that she says here, she just, she puts it perfectly. It's concise, it's eloquent, and this is what someone in power has been needing to say, and the way that she says this, it really is the just perfect. So this is relatively long, it's a five minute clip, but it's worth every single second, and I want everyone to hear this, because what she says, I think this is, this is really, really crucial, and I truly believe that we're gonna look back at this moment as a turning point in US history. Take a look. We know that Donald Trump cannot be president. We know that we cannot wait until January 19th. We cannot wait until January 20th. We cannot wait until Inauguration Day. He cannot be president right now. He should not have been president yesterday. He should not have been president the night of the attack. Um, because Republicans and the people around him are cowards, they will not do it. The president's cabinet, you have Secretary Elaine Chao, who is uh, the wife of Mitch McConnell, by the way. Seems, d does that seem a little uh, conflict of interest inappropriate? I don't know. But regardless, um, she was the Secretary of Transportation. Um, she resigned. Betsy DeVos has resigned. Acting Secretary of um, DHS, Department of Homeland Security, has resigned. And all of them are resigning rather than fulfilling their duties in enacting the 25th Amendment and removing the President of the United States. Uh, I have a message for anyone who is resigning after Wednesday. Too late. Too late. You, you're not going to resign after Wednesday and act like you weren't a part of it. Were you secretary on Wednesday? Yes, you were. You were a part of it. Were you secretary every single step leading up to Wednesday? Yes, then you were a part of it. You don't get to allow for an attack that kills five people. And then afterwards you say, I wasn't a part of it. Yes, you were. You were a part of it when you caged kids. You were a part of it when you repealed Title IX. You were a part of it when the president committed the first dozen number of crimes that he committed. You were a part of it when you excused the law breaking. You were a part of it. You were a part of it. You were a part of it. Those five people's blood is on your hands. What are you going to do? And they think that resigning is going to clean that blood off their hands. It is always on them. They are forever stained with the deaths of five people, especially when they did not invoke the 25th Amendment to remove this president when they had the power to do so. Cowards. Cowards. Couldn't even stand up in the memory of these officers that they pretend to care about. That they pretend to care about. I don't want to hear or see the Republican Party talk about blue lives ever again. This was never about safety for them. It was always a slogan because if they actually cared about rule of law, they would speak up when people break the law. They would speak up. They would enforce fairness and equity, but they don't give a damn about the law. They don't give a damn about order. They don't give a damn about, about safety. They give a damn about white supremacy. They care about preserving the social order and the mythology of whiteness. Than the, than the grandeur of our democracy. That's what they care about. They lust for power more than they care about democracy. That's what those people did when they voted to overturn the results of our free and fair elections. And you can barely call them that with the amount of voter suppression that they have engaged in across the country. It is generous to say the least, to call them that. And so with all of the rules rigged in their favor, 
The Electoral College is built on a compromise with slavers. The Senate is rigged in their favor. Gerrymandered districts are rigged in the Republicans' favor. This presidency and the law breaking and the pardons of people who have betrayed our country, all of it rigged in their favor and they can't even win with the whole deck stacked with them. They can't even win with the deck stacked in their favor. And so what they are willing to do is set a match and light our entire democracy on, fi on fire so that, they can, so that they can uphold the social order of white supremacy. That's what this is about. Straight up. This is about thinking that if an election doesn't reinforce your power, then you believe it is fundamentally illegitimate. And why do you think it's illegitimate? And how do you try to delegitimize our elections? By saying black people shouldn't vote. By saying Latino people shouldn't be full US citizens. By saying, by trying to take away, the take away, strip citizenship away from people who already have it. Not even, we're not even getting to the denial of citizenship, a full civic personhood that this party engages in. We're talking about them trying, trying to strip the citizenship away from non anybody who isn't them, anybody. And um, that's what this is about. That was incredible. I don't have much to say. Like, I don't think that my commentary uh, supplementing what she said is even meaningful at this point. Everything she said was absolutely on point. You know, the Trump era is coming to an end, and it may be coming to an end sooner than I thought. Like, I had previously believed that even if Trump is out of office, you know, Trumpian politics is still going to be a thing. He's still going to have influence within the Republican Party. But I think that this, um, this event, the January 6th coup attempt, you know, it may have accelerated the demise of the Trump era in American politics. And what's going to happen after we leave the Trump era is there's going to be a lot of Republican politicians who are going to do an about face. They're going to try to pretend as if they didn't have any role. I mean, they're already uh, scattering like cockroaches. Betsy DeVos, Elaine Chow, Chad Wolf. They were there, you know, all along. As she said, when kids were getting locked in cages, Chad Wolf was allowing Donald Trump to be an authoritarian. He enabled it very directly. He was complicit while Trump was sending, you know, unmarked vehicles to, to abduct people in Portland, Oregon. All of the things that Trump did, they enabled. And now they think that because they're resigning, because they're jumping ship at the very last moment... Well, you know, they'll they'll be OK. And they may not necessarily be wrong, because what we've seen is that whenever you come from the Trump administration, no matter how egregious your actions were in enabling Donald Trump and the damage that you caused directly, so long as you speak out against Donald Trump, you get welcomed to the resistance with open arms. I mean, we see John Bolton, who constantly agitated in Trump's administration, tried to go Trump into war with Iran. And immediately, like, he, he gets welcomed. He publishes a book, profits off of his time in the Trump administration, when folks like that should be marginalized. Folks like Anthony Scaramucci should not be brought on MSNBC and CNN. You wanted to work for this fascist. So all the things that you're saying about Donald Trump now, that's so terrible, well, it wasn't terrible enough for you to uh, not want to take a job. Seems like you're an opportunist. Seems like these folks are grifters, and we shouldn't actually take them seriously. And anyone who worked for Donald Trump and enabled Donald Trump should be permanently marginalized, not be welcome in politics, in political discussions. Because these folks are traitors. Especially now, like, if you sat by while the president literally lied about this election and got his cult following to believe that the election was stolen, stolen, if you, like, stood by during those times to the very end, I mean, what does it matter? You're jumping ship at the last minute. Come on. Come on. So, you know, I can expect folks like Betsy DeVos and Chad Wolf to have their own little autobiographies about my time working for Donald Trump. And they're going to have some tea 
and you know mainstream media is going to eat it up for clicks it's going to be sensationalist stories and everyone is going to forget the role that these folks played in aiding and abetting a fascist but i want you to be smarter than that what aoc is doing here is letting them know that they're never going to escape culpability. The blood is directly on their hands, and not just the blood of the five folks who died on the day of the siege on the Capitol, but all of the blood that Trump has caused. His drone strikes that he ramped up in Afghanistan. The children in cages, the families that were separated, everything that Donald Trump has done, it should be a stain on their legacy forever. And, you know, even though mainstream media is going to forget and rehabilitate these ghouls, we should never, ever let these folks live it down and constantly remind everyone that these are not allies. These are not American patriots. These are fucking traitors. And we should never, ever let them live down this moment.